All right, Cowboy fans, this past Sunday we played against the Detroit Lions, I think. I think we played against the Detroit Lions. Because looking at this game, guys, we got our behinds. Well, they ran on us. They threw on us. They made every tackle. They intercepted that Prescott in the red zone. I mean, this game was a complete tragedy. It was almost like we went out there, we dressed up, we had on our cute uniforms, and we got outplayed, we got beat up, we got bullied. And we went to tell the teacher on the bully, but the teacher got beat up. That's just what it seemed like to me. I don't know about y'all, but no matter what, I'm still around the Cowboy fan. I'm still going to support my team, but this was embarrassing. Although we are 3-3, three and three, we still have a lot to clean up. I mean, Stafford went out there and played better than that. He has more weapons, though. The defense couldn't stop a nosebleed. I just couldn't believe what was done. But today, I got David Irving on here with me. He's going to go over some field and go over some stuff if he has some things to say. But let's see what the talking is. Big picture take as you watch that game. Uh, <clears throat> Grinny, I don't, I don't say this lightly. And Rex and Dano know what I'm about to say is uh, it's kind of it's a big deal. Dallas Cowboys are soft. And for me to use the word soft, you're basically attacking players' manhood yeah. on the field. And if you look at the way the Dallas Cowboys have played, I always say the game of football is very simple, okay? You block, you tackle, throw, pitch, catch, all that type of stuff. If you can't win in the trenches, you have no shot at winning in the National Football League. I bet anyone, anyone, go look at the film. Just watch the game. And just watch what goes on in the trenches with the Dallas Cowboys. They can't move anybody up front on offense. And on defense, they are getting – the line of scrimmage is getting removed three and four yards backwards. Running backs aren't even getting touched. Look at this. No one's getting touched at the line of scrimmage. I, and, and on offense, look, we're seeing all these guys, guys oh. coming free right up the middle on the offensive line. So, again, these problems – we can talk about coaching and all these type of things, but at the end of the day – these guys are soft. That's the bottom line. No scheme is going to correct what's ailing the Dallas Cowboys right now. Mm -hmm. well, thank you all for tuning in to another amazing show of Unmuted. I am your host, comedian Scott Simpkins, a.k.a. Simp7. Y'all make sure y'all check that out. Put it in your DMs and everything, y'all. Man, listen, today I'm super stoked. Y'all already know I'm one of the biggest Cowboy fans there ever was. I'm just saying, 1984. Born and created Cowboys fan, and I'm so elated to have one of the best defensive ends that we ever had. He didn't last long like I wanted him to, but <laughs> he is on the platform. He's in here with me, man. And um, I want y'all to check out some of his uh, his moves right quick. Of every game this year had a great third quarter, and this time he gets sacked at the 18-yard line. David Irving, him right now. Four-man rush, and the pass is high and intercepted at the 40-yard line. Jeff, he that boy was bad. Hey, old nigga McDougal, hey, you saw that? He uh, killed Jameis Winston. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I got right here in this place right now, man, my guy, Mr. David Irving. How you doing, bro? Man, I'm blessed. It's a blessing. Again, I appreciate you, man. How's everyone doing out there? Hey, they doing good. Cowboy haters, y'all come on in. I'm pretty sure y'all want to see this, man. Oh, they in there. Yeah, oh, they yeah, in. They, they definitely in there. But before we get started, man, y'all already know what to do, man. Look, like, comment, share. It costs you absolutely nothing to support this channel. Like, comment, share. Go ahead one more time. Like, comment, and share. Hit that button and hit that notification so whenever a video drops, you can be notified that Simp7 Entertainment Unmuted is uploading. So let's get right into it, man. You got Mike McCarthy in 12 and 5. So you said something earlier about the culture, man. It's like they're, they're kind of soft, you know. What what what's why do you think that we lost three playoff games when we had a chance to take it all away? Man. David, because you play, you play reckless, bro. You you got out to the quarterback. Oh, I'm out there, bro. I'm fucking out there, bro. Ever nose guard, three technique, either either in. I'm I'm fucking out there. Yeah. Uh they didn't play who they're supposed to fucking play and put us in positions as let me tell you how we would have won a Super Bowl. Let me tell you how we would have had the best defense in, in history. Probably. 
me at left end, uh, Greg Hardy at right end, off fucking top. No, nah, fuck that. Randy at right end, Greg Hardy at three technique, and Ty, and Ty Crawford, uh, he could take nose. We was in that, that lineup alone, bro. So with no DeMarcus Lawrence in that, no D-Law? Who? I'm just no kidding. D- no D-Law. Now, nah, D-Law is a good player, bro. He he puts in the work and he has developed skill. I've watched him develop his skill, but certain people's bodies only do certain things, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the, no dis- disrespect. Because like I said, you know, I love you, D-Law. You my guy, but. Uh, and no disrespect, I'm just saying facts. Uh, me and D-Law bumped heads a lot of times. Really? Because he, yeah, because he was the left end. And when I went into the NFL, that's all I played was left end. I didn't switch around at first. So it became a time where, you know, obviously a rookie, I'm behind him. I barely touched the field. I had three snaps against the Patriots my first year. whoop de doo You know what I'm saying? You're right. Uh, and D-Law was in front of me until next camp. Week one, he was still in front of me. Week two, we split in reps. Week three, I'm the one. Coach moved him to right end. Demarcus Lawrence wasn't comfortable playing right end, and just the ego of getting moved over, you know, for some some guy under you who's getting paid nothing. And uh, so it was one play in camp where coach specifically pulled me to the side because he must have talked to Demarcus about it, and Demarcus said no. He told me specifically, "Big man, do you know?" You're the left end. I don't give a fuck what anyone tells you. You're the fucking left end. Now get out there. I go out there with D-Law. He's already out there. We break the huddle. Sean Lee breaks us out. We both walk to the left. I'm like, I'm the left. At, at first, I was, you know, modest. You know, hey, coach told me I'm the left end. Nah, you the right end. You get over to the right side. I was like, nah, bro. Coach specifically told me I'm left end. This play, at this point, the quarterback's waiting for us to solve it because they don't want to snap the ball. I was like, look, bro, I'm fucking left in, bro. I told you this shit. He's like, nah, man, like I told you, go. So I just lined up in my three-point stance right next to him. We both the left in then, nigga. And uh, he started to kind of try to get aggressive with me. And coach put us to the sideline. And, you know, he started talking. You know, he bigger, older. And he started yapping his mouth. And like I told him, then in the first time, took my helmet off. Look, bro, you're doing all this fucking talking and, and walking close. I'm from Compton, bro. I don't do none of that shit. I reached out my arm. I said, this is my my bubble, nigga. Come in my bubble. I'm fucking you up. He didn't come in my bubble, bro. And this was in front of all the teammates. You you doing all that yapping, shut the fuck up. And after that, I was the left end. What did you see? What did you see in the game uh uh this past Sunday when we got blown out? Everything what I happened. Needed, everything I needed to see. Um I'm not just saying this because it's me, but and and you know maybe your fans is maybe the fans are saying the same thing. Our D line is ass. No one's disrupting. I remember put it like this: when I was out there, it was like a, like let's just take it to numbers. It was like a forty percent chance I'm gonna get right in the backfield. Now whether the play was in my direction or not didn't matter, but you know David's gonna he's gonna be the one white jersey popping through. And how I'm I'm skinnier than y'all. I'm taller than y'all. Y'all bench press three times as much as me. Y'all squat double me. Why am I the one in the backfield? Like it's just some DNA muscle fiber shit. I don't know, but they need they need a real they need someone like me in there. That's what it is. They got no disruption. Parsons, num- a guy wearing number eleven is getting most of the sacks. What does that say about our D line? Woo! Yeah, yeah. Parsons, you're taking away from him if you ask me. I don't, I ain't seen him play, but just knowing the game, you're taking away from him. My, if they're bringing him on the line and playing him, it's because he's the best pass rusher out of our defensive linemen. We got run over and over and over. And I mean, he'll just, I don't, I mean, I don't know. It just defense is it's, it's like, remember when I was there, we had the top three defense, number one in the red zone. We were really nice, man. We lost every game, though. Why? Our offense was ass. Put it like this and go look at the film. The year where we went uh, was not 13 and one. The, the year before that, when we were fucking ass. The problem was, man, if our offense could score one touchdown a quarter, we probably would have went to the Super Bowl. Look at the film. Look yeah. at the score. Yeah. Yeah. Would have just scored one touchdown a quarter. One touchdown. Yeah. Some yeah. games, if you even kick one field goal a quarter, we would win. Yeah. But you still can't stop them on defense. 
Exactly. Just they needed one stop. I guess I think the announcers kept saying too. Uh, it really doesn't matter how much Dallas scores if the defense can't stop them. They right. haven't stopped. Them. But everybody want to say game. Dak. I Dak turned off the, no. I turned. Oh, appreciated David Irving. That was pretty dope for him to stop by and be on here with me. But listen, guys, we still have eleven games left. Uh, beginning of the year, four games in, six games in. With three and three. We still got a chance to turn this thing around, Cowboy Nation. I suggest go get C.D. Lamb some help. Go bring back Amari Cooper. He's available, please. But at the end of the day, I'm still a Cowboys fan for life. Y'all make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Please do that and make sure you stay DC'd up and prayed up and make sure that everything is the starch like on the side of the helmet. Peace.